In this video, I will be performing a linear static analysis using 2D shells and spherical coordinates. Full details of this exercise are on page 340 of the PDF linked in the video description below. And I'll simply move over to a new pattern session. Make sure this is a, a new one that you're not carrying over or you're not continuing on from a previous example. I'll create a new file. I'll actually have to make a new folder here on my desktop called problem5. And here I'll make a file called problem5. Click OK here. I'll first begin by saying the units for this example are in inches, pounds, and PSI. Under the geometry tab, I'll go ahead and create a coordinate system using the three-point method. Here we're using spherical coordinates. For my origin, it will start at 0, 0, 0. A point on the third axis will be 0, 1, 0. And a point on plane 1, 3 will be 1, 0, 0. So when I click apply, see that my R runs down the X, my T runs down this length, and my P goes along this way. Now, I'll be creating this um, model using just uh, the meshing tools. But first, I have to create a curve using the 2D arc method. So here, my radius will be 10 inches. My start angle will be 0, and uh, my end angle will be 45 degrees. My construction plane list, this will be using the third axis in the coordinate system 0, which is the z-axis in this global coordinate system here. My center point will be the crosshair here and when I click apply. You'll see my object drawn here, but this is actually not how I want it drawn, so I'll undo this. My start angle will be 270, my end angle will be 315. And I click apply. Now you'll see it, it's drawn here. Now I can go to the meshing tab and mesh this. I'll use the one-way bias method to create my seeds. Here I'll have the arrow indicating that L1 starts here and L2 ends here, as shown in the diagram here. My L1 and L2 will be 0.36 inches and my L2 will be 0.72 inches. I select this curve, you see it's meshed. Here I'll go and select Curve Meshers, select this curve, and click Apply. And now here the feedback is 15 elements have been created. Now I have to go ahead and sweep this three-dimensionally. To do this, I go to the Fem Action Sweep. I'll select these elements to sweep. Or actually I have to click, or reduce my filter to just these beam elements. So now I can click and select. Uh, click refresh, or reset graphics if, if it doesn't clean up here. So, so far I've selected these beam elements here. What I will do is sweep these elements about the Y. So here I would change this to coordinate system axis 2 or what you could do is simply click these one, two, and three icons and it'll automatically drop the value here. So here I want axis two of coordinate system zero. You'll see it dropped it in. I want my sweep angle to be 90 degrees. And for my mesh control, I want 10 elements. Click OK and click apply. I forgot to do something. I forgot to delete my original elements. So now what I have here are two dimensional elements and beam elements along this length and that's not what I want. So I'll undo that. I'll click delete original elements. So when I click apply, it deletes the beam elements here and just creates these 2D elements. To verify I've done this right, you can go to the home tab, click label control, type in element numbers. 
And if you did have beam elements here, you would see numbers in addition to 12, 13, 14, and so on. You would see additional numbers here indicating there are additional elements here. But since I checked delete original elements, they are not here. And one last thing I have to do, back in the meshing tab, I have to modify my nodes. Click edit. I want to modify my analysis and reference coordinate system. For my analysis coordinate system, I wish to use this spherical coordinate system called chord one. And my reference coordinate system will be just this original one, chord zero. I want this applied to all the nodes. You can drag and select or just pick all by clicking this icon. Click apply. Here you'll see that uh, my 166 nodes have been modified. Now I can go ahead and move on to my properties. So under isotropic, call this material material. Under input properties, my elastic modulus is 10 E6 PSI and my Poisson ratio is 0.3 click OK and apply. Now to assign this material to this element, let me turn off the numbers here and turn off label control. I can under properties select 2D property shell. Here I'll just call it property. Under input properties I select this material. My thickness is 0 0.05 inches. Click OK for your application region. We wish to select all the shell elements, or you can click quad, that'll actually let you select all the quad elements. But if you do it that way, you, you select the quala, quad elements, but you have not selected the tria elements here, tria. So to fix that, what you can do is, in addition, pick this filter and select these, or you can select all the shell elements here. So here when I select all of these, you see the orange ones are highlighted, or the green ones are highlighted too. So I can pick all, add them, OK, and apply. So now this these elements have material assigned to them. I can move over to my boundary conditions now. Under displacement constraint, I will make my first constraint, and I'll call it edge. Under input data, I'll prevent translation in the two directions, so comma, zero, comma, close. For the analysis coordinate frame, you will select the spherical system. Click OK for your application region. You will want to select these top edges here. Here we're dealing with just the mesh, so we don't have geometry to deal with. We have a fem. Here I'll go ahead and use the polygon pick to enclose these top nodes. Add them, OK, and apply. And you'll notice I missed one, so I have to go ahead and modify this. So under the Home tab, turn on the Model Tree open up the LBC section and right click the edge and modify. This is OK. Click OK and for your application region just add this one node here. Click add, OK and apply. Now you see the condition is there for the top edge. Next I'll define a symmetry condition so here under nodal click displacement constraint call the symmetry. For your input data I'll just prevent translation in the third direction. So the one and two are blank, but the third has a zero. Coordinate analysis coordinate system should be this one again. So chord one, click OK for your application region. We want to go ahead and select these nodes here. So this could get a little tricky. So I'll go ahead and reorient this. And I want to select this edge and this edge too. So I'll just simply drag the window and get as close as possible. Add these nodes. And orient it so you can select these other nodes here. And make sure you haven't accidentally chosen this node or that node. Select the ones along this length and this length. Click Add. 
And here to verify, you'll see that there are orange indicators around the nodes you've just selected. So click OK and apply. And let me turn these off. Let me create a new one called Center. From my input data, pre prevent translation in the one direction, or actually the two direction. So drop a zero there, leave one and three blank. Click OK for your application region. Simply select this middle node here, add it, OK, and apply. You'll see the marker there. And I want to prevent rotations for all these elements or nodes. So I'll create a new one called Rotations. Here I'll leave that blank. Here I'll prevent rotation for the one, two, or the four, five, and six directions. Make sure you have analysis corner frame chord one. For your application region, you select all the nodes. Click Add, OK, and Apply. So one thing to note is when you use another coordinate system other than this one, chord zero, you will have in parentheses an indicator of what coordinate system this boundary condition is using. So here I'm using coordinate system one, which is a spherical coordinate system. Here I can see I'm using coordinate system one, coordinate system one, and the same for the last one coordinate system one. Now I can go ahead and apply my pressure. So here under the boundary conditions tab, click pressure, type in pressure as the name. Your target element type is 2D for your input data. You'll apply a top pressure of 200 PSI. Click OK for your application region. You can leave this selected, try your quad elements and pick all. All the elements have been selected, add it, OK, and apply. Now I can go ahead and go to the Analysis tab and analyze this entire model. Hit Apply. Once the analysis is done, I'll hide my model tree. I'll import my XDB results. Now I can view my results and uh, make sure to clean this up using the reset graphics icon. Now the first thing we'll go ahead and view are my global X and Y displacements. So here, click displacements translational, click X component, or I'll actually view my fringe. Displacement translational, quantity is X component, your coordinate transformation should be chord zero. When I click apply, you can see my values here. So here I've displaced 0 0.01 inches, and here I've displaced 0 inches. Or this is 0 0.01, actually. And this is 0 0.03 inches. So when I view the results here, I have to carefully look here. And here I'll compare it to my global translational displacements here. My global translational Y displacements here. I have to go ahead and obtain those. So I've seen my X. Now I can see my Y. Now to view radial displacements of the membrane, you have to um, leave coordinate transformation coordinate ID and select in this top coordinate system, the spherical one. Click the X component and hit apply. See here, we've obtained 0 0.01 inches and 0 0.0138. If I look at the values here, that I believe that is what I do get. So change in R2 here. Now if I want to view my, 
my radial stresses, I will scroll down and click stress tensor, switch the quantity to, or yeah, the quantity to X component and hit apply. Here you can view your results. I get 85 PSI here, and 6 PSI there. You can compare it here. So here you see I get 85 and 6. For my next stresses, I would get a 20,000 and 20,000 approximately. So I'm going to switch to the Y. 20,000 and 20,000 here. Let me compare this to the results here. And for my last one, I would get a 20,000 too. So switch over to your Z component and hit apply. So 20,000 and 20,000 again. If you want a better view of the numbers, what you can do is go to the display attributes, scroll down to label style, turn on fixed, hit OK, and hit apply. Now you can see the exponent's been removed, and it's just purely a number, 20,000 PSI for here and here. Clean it up, save it, and this concludes this video.